Hi everyone, welcome. This is Gina. This is number 48 to 49. I'm using my prints that I made marks on or I just uh, did some jelly printing. But most of them, so far I think, for this video anyway, it's just ones that I made marks on. So in my previous video, I did, I had the same, um, I used the same card. So if you want to skip forward to see what happens after I cut it up, because you've watched the previous video and you've saw, seen all this before, you can skip ahead to 9.15. But if you didn't see it and you want to see how I got my base, then you can continue watching. Right. So here I'm just using my paper and I'm using Mod Podge to stick all my papers down. My colors today were supposed to be red, but I'm calling it red and pink because it looks more pink than red, but I'm going to call it red and pink, right? <laughs> and then my phone is not the best at taking true pictures, apparently. So sometimes the colors don't look the way that they should. I thought that I could, I should add some marks on the board, my paper. So I'm going to use a piece of charcoal stick to just make some curves, some marks here and there on the piece, knowing and keeping in mind, remembering that I'm going to cut it up. So I'm not going to, it's not going to look like this. It's not going to remain whole. It's not going to remain connected, but it's going to have some marks. I made the marks, keeping in mind that I wanted some of those black marks on all pieces of my card. Here I'm using a piece of soft pastel, red, to make some, just to add some color on the edges of those papers that I stuck down because I want to blend it in. I'm going to use water to activate it and I'm hoping to blend the color in so that the paper's not going to look like it's stuck down. It's going to hopefully unify the page but I didn't like the way that it was looking I was still seeing a lot of the paper through it and the texture of the paper I didn't like seeing that I didn't like how it blended I don't know if it I think it was just that particular piece of um, pastel that I used but I didn't like the way it was blending and then I didn't want my intention wasn't to cover the entire area with the pastel. It was just close to where the paper joined the paper. Where I stuck the paper down. Yeah. But it wasn't it didn't it didn't work. And then I didn't want so much white as well, but I wanted it very a nice light kind of washed out vibe. So you could still mm. see that some very very white 
but nice colored faded areas as well so what i decided to do was just take the red and make those marks over the same areas that i was trying to blend in and i just kind of gave up trying to blend the paper in it just turned into a mark making time where i just used the red paint to mark those same areas but what i did like was the other color feathering out so it's all sometimes you know we think we're covering up things that we did before but sometimes it's just about layers and not about covering up so if i think if we think of it as i'm adding another layer which is adding more character to my piece instead of this was cool and now i have to cover it up then we wouldn't feel so badly about quote unquote covering it up and here I'm trying not to have too many white, white, super white areas in my face. So I'm just very, very light wash of the red, which is very washed out. So it looks pink now. I'm just adding those marks very haphazardly, very wishy-washy over those white areas. And then I'm activating the charcoal with the water. Same brush. I didn't wash it out or anything so that the charcoal will be activated and it will be it will set and be a little more permanent than if it wasn't activated with the water here i'm bringing in some more of my papers that i made some marks on it's just some red stripes that i put on a page thinking that someday I might need some stripes and maybe I'll need some red stripes. And here I'm using it. I didn't know what shape to cut or how to cut it. So I just went around and around and then I cut it in pieces and I'm just going to piece them together the way I think is, you know, fine. But also keeping in mind that I am going to cut this up. So what I'm trying to do is make sure to put a piece in every piece that will be cut so there will be some piece of it somewhere that was the idea and the reason i use mod podge is because it's thick and it's liquid and when it spreads it's it doesn't make it lumpy you know when well for me when i use regular glue because it's so watery it um if obviously if i put too much it's going to be very lumpy when it dries and i want the nice smooth i want it smooth when i lay it down and that's what mud bodge does for me previously i tried using tacky glue and it reminded me why i wasn't using it to do these and it's for that reason because it, it gets very lumpy tacky glue is very thick Mod Podge is, is, has more moisture, at least for me anyway, the one that I use. So I find this is, um, it's easier for me to use. I'm sure that I will try something else. And when I do, I'll let you know how that goes and you'll see for yourself. But yeah, I am happy to be exploring and experimenting with shapes and textures and colors and, and product. But at the same time, I use what I can afford at the time and I use what I have. So I had the Mod Podge. Honestly, I've had this Mod Podge for several years and I wasn't using it. And I wasn't using it because it was very extremely expensive. But I decided to use it. It's worthwhile. It's something that's needed. I'm doing art and I convinced myself that this is an investment and I'm investing in myself, my art. So that's why I decided to start using it and use it out. I paid for it, so it's fine. So I got my two pieces, right? I cut it up. I cut up my sheet in two and this is one half of the the two that I'm using. So I cut that this half, I cut that half in these two pieces and I got these two pieces. So now I'm just adding in some more marks with the charcoal pencil. I try to use this, um, it's a china pencil, a white china pencil. It said standard on it. I don't even know as a brand. 
but it didn't work the way I thought it would so I mean I tried it I'll I'll try it again but I didn't like how it worked at all but I'll try it on a different surface so here I'm bringing in my paper stencil that I made what I did was print out an image that I liked I and I cut it out with a craft knife I put it on a piece of cardstock and that's my stencil yay I try to keep them in good condition so they could last a while. So I thought a nice big leaf would work on this page and I am doing my theme is pink and red. It's really red but I'm saying pink and red for the purposes of what it turned out to be. <laughs> so I'm adding paint, red paint. It's very translucent, so I'm going to go over it a couple times with a couple layers. And then because the left side of the card was so red, I'm going to go use white acrylic paint to kind of lighten it up so it's going to look a bit pink. So it will show up against the red a little better. So that didn't really show up as much as I was hoping. So I'm using the white Posca marker just to help it show up some more and help it stand out and so you can actually see it. The Posca markers are very cool. Even the pointer, I use pointer markers as well. But the set that I bought, it doesn't have white or black in it, which is very annoying. But they have other colors and they work really good too. So if you have any other um, paint markers that you use that are not pointer or they're not Posca, let me know. And maybe I could look for them and, you know, whenever I get some money, I could try it out. But yeah, it's because I mean, I think it's cool to try different products. We never know what could work, what works well. We always see one brand or two brands that work well, but it, I think it's cool to learn about others. So if any of you use others... And you find that they work well let me know in the comments I would love 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 to hear I decided to put the other half of the leaf um, the branch black just because I mean why not and yeah I just made some marks inside I want I was thinking of doing dots but I wasn't feeling it so I just did my usual lines and this is what it looks like so i was thinking this would be it for the card it's pretty nice i like it but then i thought how cool it would be if i actually did a larger leaf over the smaller branch i don't know I felt like being a little adventurous. So I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. I'm placing it over it and trying to picture it in my mind. And then I thought, okay, let's do this. And I thought I would do two of those leaves overlapping each other. So I'm going to use a pencil. I, I thought I was going to use my marker first, but I thought, nah, let's do the pencil first so we won't make any silly mistakes, which I did. <laughs> But we got to use a pencil so we could erase if and when needed. And that's when I made my mistake. <laughs> and there we go. Because it's supposed to be on top and yeah. Anyway. You know when you put lines where they're not supposed to have lines? That's what happened. So I'm just tr checking it out. I'm holding it at an angle for me so that I could see the pencil mark. Because, you know, at some angles they can't see it at all. 
And I'm trying to decide if I like it and if I actually want to do this. Because you know... <laughs> you Once you start, you can't go back. So I'm mixing pink, adding some white to my red. And I'm going to black out those areas outside of those big leaves. My main thing here is to try to get my edges as neat as possible and to try to get the coverage as neat as possible as well. Um, I also wanted it to be a bit transparent because I wanted to see the background showing through the areas that I covered. I didn't want it to be completely pink where you can't see anything underneath. So those were my three things I was thinking about and focusing on while doing this. This part here was tricky for me because I was trying to decide how to fill in this part of the leaf and if it would look weird because they kind of, because they overlap. So I came in with my marker and I thought, okay, let's define it because we can't really make it out. And I thought, okay, I could see that a little better, but it still looks kind of weird with the pink running down in the middle there. So I'm going over it, I'm outlining everything in the black. I figure I made that bottom part too wide, but what the heck, whatever. Then I gave it a border because it was just looking really weird. I feel like it needed more of a background, but I don't know. Maybe some splashes. I did not add splashes, but I think I'll add some splashes in the background, some white splashes. So here I'm thickening up the line because it still looks weird. For me anyway. I'm thickening up those black lines now. I was just going to do that part and then I ended up doing the entire thing. Because it was just looking weird. But I think I'm going to add some black, some white splashes. Yes, I'm going to do it. But I do like that I could see the parts of the background through the pink. I do like that very much. It is, I think for somebody who likes pink, this will be a nice gift. Who really likes pink. So with this one, I'm going in with my acetate. I cut out a stencil here. Again, I printed a shape that I liked uh, stuck it I what did I do I put it oh I used the acetate and I covered my image then I took a marker and I traced the image moved the paper out and then I cut out the acetate with a, a knife uh, a craft knife so that's how I got my stencil so I actually have a mask and a stencil from that piece which is so cool again I'm mixing red and white to cover my background i'm focusing on the same things i want the back to be blended nicely as smoothly as possible i want my edges to be you know neat and i just want the blend to be smooth and i want to see parts of the background still through it so it's the same things that apply i'm using a square tip brush is that right square tipped brush so that I could get my edges as neat as possible. But the round tip is kind of tricky and some areas get paint where you don't want the paint, at least for me. So I find that doing edges, I like to use a square. Or 
a very pointy brush depending on what it is but yeah the square tip covers more area quicker and it's nice sharp edge and yeah I did make some mistakes but I thought I could just go over it with the marker when I'm done but I wanted nice smooth coverage as even as possible she looks so cool love it but it felt unfinished it didn't feel complete so I'm just going over her what do you call that her border to define her a little more once again because she kind of started to fade into the background there we go she's coming up she's popping now and then I thought how cool it would be if I extend those lines that was you know that she ended up on just to create some continuity and connection to the rest of the card. But she still didn't feel complete. So I thought I'd just do another one of her staggered just a little bit off. Uh, just do an outline in white so I liked how that looked very much but it wasn't showing up the way that I thought it would so I'm just using the thinner paint marker to put an a line on the inside of that white outline <laughs> the inside of the outline <laughs> yeah so I like this a lot I'm giving this an, a scrappy border as well it's just a couple lines with the marker and yes I found her background was really plain so I just came in with this stencil and added some marks here and there just to add some something else to the background if I thought of it before, I would have done it before. But, you know, sometimes creating is like that. So this is pretty much her. I love it because it makes me think of you but not you and somebody else but you these two images are you and you know there are so many different sides to us and sometimes we could seem like another person but we're all it's still connected we're still connected it's still part of us and sometimes we're torn sometimes we have being pulled in different directions i just even though it looks like two different people, it's still one. 